as I touch this to something that's taking the heat out of it, immediately as soon as it starts to cool off, that light turns on and it puts more temperature into it. And it will balance the temperature to the connection so it always maintains an ideal soldering temperature. And you can adjust the throttle or the, te the temperature up and down from the dial all the time. Keeps your iron more clean and lets you solder a wider variety of things without damaging it. Um, for wires and stuff, if you get it overheated, what's going to happen is that the insulation is going to melt and burn and turn black and kind of sink back a little bit. It's not a big deal, you know, it just makes it ugly. But there are electronic components, diodes, transistors, uh, things like that. If you solder them too hot, you actually burn out the component and it won't function properly. So it's very important you keep temperature uh, with electronic things. Uh, if you have to be soldering on a circuit board, repairing something in a radio, overheating that will actually make the tracks lift right off the boards. So for those um, delicate soldering procedures, a uh, soldering station is a better idea. And now what I'd like you to do is get a little closer this time. You guys all stood kind of far off. Um, when I do this next connection, I want you to see where the iron goes and I want you to see how the solder flows. If you need to do it a couple at a time, that's fine. Once again, we're going to cross over the connections about a 90, about equally distant in both directions and twisting opposite directions for the two. There is a tool we can use to help us uh, solder with. It's called a panavice. Um, looks like a set of crab arms on a base. And if you're starting something delicate, it's nice to have it held steady for you. What we can do in the shop is a lot of times you just prop it up on something, you know, sit in a tool, just anything to keep it from moving around too much while you're doing it. I like to brace myself so I can keep steady. So my elbows on the table help out. And again, I'm going to put the tip to the wire. And then I'm going to feed a little bit of solder in between the tip and the wire. And that will bridge the heat into the connection. And once that happens, fairly quickly, the solder will start to flow. And you can see how that wets. It's right in there. All the way up and down. And you're good. That'll cool pretty rapidly. In 10, 15 seconds. Oh, it's a little hot. No, it wasn't hot. It was just a little poke. But almost ready to handle. Now, if you have a big wire, uh, four years old, they can stay hot for many seconds or minutes. So you want to be a little more cautious with that. 